In this video, we are going to show you how to use the CCS compiler within MPLABX. At this point, we'll assume that you have already installed a copy of MPLABX. Now we're going to install the CCSC compiler plugin. First, we'll select Tools from the menu toolbar. Then select Plugins. Let's select the Available Plugins tab, and you'll notice a list of available plugins. Select CCSC Compiler, and then click the Install button. Wait a second. Then we'll accept, and click Install again. We'll wait for it to install, and then restart the program to load the new plugin for use. Select Finish, and we'll wait for MPLABX to reload. Now that MPLABX has restarted, let's make sure that our plugin installed correctly and is identifiable from within MPLABX. First, we'll go to Tools, then Plugins, then open the Installed tab. Note that CCSC Compiler appears on the list. Let's verify the plugin sees the CCSC toolchain. Select Tools, then Options, then click the embedded icon. Find CCSC listed in the toolchain options and click OK. To start, we'll select New Project. Make sure Microchip Embedded is selected in the Category Selection list, and make sure Standalone Projects is selected in the Project Selection list. Then select Next. Now we need to select the chip type. Notice we're leaving Families as All Families. We then select Device. In the Device menu drop-down, we'll type PIC18F4520, since this is the chip we're going to be using for this demonstration. Press Enter, then select Next. In this step, we want to select the ICD tool to use in this project. You'll notice, however, we cannot use CCS ICDs from within MPLABX. Microchip only allows use of their ICDs. We would like to point out that you have the ability to use any CCS ICD in CCS's IDE. For use of this video project, we're going to use an ICD3 programmer and debugger. Make sure ICD3 is selected, then click Next. From the Compiler Selection area, we're going to click on CCSC Compiler, and then select Next. In the Project Name area, we are going to name our project CCS Demo. For project location, you can choose to point to a folder for your particular project or leave it at the default. For this demonstration, we'll leave it at the default. MPLABX does give the option to select Set as Main Project if you have more than one project in the location folder. In this demo, we are only going to have the one project, so we'll click Finish. Let's create a source file. In this step, find Source Files from the CCS Demo Project menu. Right click Source Files. Select New, then see Source File. For the file name, we're going to use CCS Demo. Notice in the created file area where the source code will be saved. Then select Finish. Or we can add an existing source file from outside the project we just created. Right click Source Files, then click Add Existing Item, then select the code file. Double-click the file in the Source Files drop-down to open it in the editor. Now let's start the compile process. MPLABX gives us two choices for this step. We can choose between Build Project or Clean and Build Project. By selecting Clean and Build, it will clean the code and compile it for us. For this demonstration, we'll select Clean and Build. We feel this is the better of the two options to choose. Here you'll notice that results are provided on memory usage. Output of the compile is provided here in the output pane. You'll notice that the specific error code is underlined and in blue text. It shows us the specific line number or we can click on it, and it takes us to the line number in the code. In this part of the demonstration, we'll show you how to debug your project using MPLABX. We'll start by selecting Debug from the toolbar menu, then select Debug Project. You'll notice that after we selected Debug, it began to run. At this point, MPLABX will continue the debugging process without waiting to receive a Go instruction. So to get around this, we have to click Pause, then Reset. After clicking on Reset, the debug tool will wait for instructions. We'd like to point out that compiler features that rely on the CCS IDE or hardware will not work in MPLABX. For example, data streaming, serial numbering, 
or code profiling. To discontinue debugging, we can click on Stop. This completes the debugging process. We would like to point out that from the CCS IDE, you have the ability to debug from a single click without pausing and restarting. Now we'll point out where the output files can be found. In the Project pane, we'll click on the Files tab. Here we notice a file tree of our project files. Let's click down into the CCS Project Demo folder then click dist, default, debug, or production to reach the hex file. Now it's time for us to program the chip. First we'll click the make and program device button. We'll wait for it to program and Perfect! It provided us the output we wanted to see. Programming and verify complete. So at this point, the chip is programmed with our code. This concludes our demonstration on using the CCSC compiler within the MPLABX IDE. We hope you found this video useful and informative. Please visit www.ccsinfo.com for more information on CCS compilers and IDEs that are intuitive and easy to use.